My guest today is Javier Lozano. Javier, how are you today? How's it going? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I love I love being on your show. It's the I, second I time know it's been, been on your so show. long. It's been, <laughs> I, know. I don't know, seven years maybe? I gotta go back yes, and look. Yes, it has. Yes. <laughs> what do you do, Javier, for a living, I mean? So what do I do? Well, I was going to say, my wife even asked that question. So. <laughs> what, what would you yeah, say so that I, you do here? Like what is, exactly. So I own a, a small consultancy shop out of the great state of Iowa, in Des Moines, uh -huh. Iowa. Yep. So we primarily focus on .NET, uh, Azure, all, you know, pretty much anything Microsoft stack that we do. Uh, so, yeah, I, I do that for fun. Um, well, for money and fun, right? Uh, but then I also do a bunch of other projects for the community since I'm an, I'm an MVP for Microsoft and things like that. So I want to talk about uh, one of the projects you do is yeah. uh, just recently you did something called .NET Conf. In fact, Correct. you did yeah. it for, I don't know how many times you've done this thing. Uh, this is this was our 10th year. 10th year, well, congratulations. 10th year, thank you, yeah. It's a landmark. Yeah. Uh, tell me first about uh, .NET Conf, what is that? So .NET Conf is the, uh, I would say, is the conference for .NET. So, um, what? Well, so so the intent of it essentially is to showcase uh, the platform as a whole from both the product team and the community. So one of the things that we try to do is try to showcase that hey, look, these are actual people working behind on the product, right, and on the Microsoft stack, whether it be the actual. Um, ASP.NET Core, be Blazor, be Visual Studio, whatever, you know, all the tools that people use for Microsoft, mm -hmm. here's the actual people behind them, and they're showing you how to use it, right? At you the got, same time, we try to... From the product, actually building the product. From the product, from, yeah, like for, ex, like, for example, this past keynote, we had a surprise visit um, by Scott Gu. Great. So, Scott, um, so uh, we were able to get Scott Gu on the show, and he's showing that yeah, he still has the notebook, from all the notes that he took when he first designed ASP.NET on paper. Oh my gosh! Wow. So, for those who don't know, Goo is short for Guthrie, who's uh, yes, an executive correct. vice president of Microsoft. And, right. Yeah. Uh, he owns pretty much all of Azure. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, runs uh, it. Uh, software developer legend. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So he's. So you know, those are the kind of things that just goes on to show you that look, it's just these are just people building software, just like right. you and I are building software, right? So it kind of gives it this nice homey feel about it. Um, but at the same time, there's great content. You learn things. It's not just like, hey, here's just edutainment. It's really actually education that we have. So, but yeah, yeah, we've been going for 10 years strong. And several years ago, one of the things that we did, uh, it was the idea by uh, by Jeff Fritz. You know Jeff Fritz, right? If I know him well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So Jeff, Jeff had this crazy idea in, in a great sense was that let's do 24 hours of dot net and we're like let's do that and the third year we're like why do we keep doing this now i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> so what 24 hours of dot net means is that we actually go and actually it's more than 24 hours um we go from day two starts at 9 a.m pacific hmm. Now, this is independent of .NET Conf, right? No, this is part of .NET Conf. This is .NET okay. Yeah, so this is part of .NET Conf. So, so essentially what we do is that we have is a three-day conference, right? First day is we showcase mostly product team because it's mm -hmm. easier to just go from 9 to 5 Pacific, right. right? Day two, we also show product team, but we show product team from 9 to 5 Pacific, mm -hmm. starting at 5 Pacific until 5 p.m. Pacific the following day. Okay. We do community. Uh and community, I assume you're getting people around the world. Around the world, time. exactly. Yeah, so, so we will have Europe people. And Asia yeah, we have and we had a lot of people from Africa this year. A lot of wow. people from Asia, Australia, you name it, right? So we actually have people who take shifts uh -huh. and say, okay, now you're doing a four-hour shift in the actual time zone that the you know, or within plus or minus a couple hours, right, of the people presenting. So wow. we do that across the globe as the sun oh, sets and it's rising. So yeah, so that's it's it's a lot of fun because we're able to squeeze a lot more, um, a lot more community folks in that in that space. That is really cool. I have to confess, uh, although I've had uh, the privilege of speaking around the world, I uh -huh. don't know a whole lot of people in the developer community in Africa. Right. Like oh, yeah. In my knowledge. It, it, when I think about it, and, and that's the thing that we love about uh, the reason why .NET Comp started was that we wanted to give people. Well, I wanted to say, here's the microphone. Share your passion. 
Yeah. Right? That's why I do uh, this. If, right. Yeah. If, if you're brand new to it, you know what? Welcome to stage fright. And that's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Right? Yeah. You just need to be feel a little more comfortable with it and trying to understand what you're good at, what you're not good at, and that's sure. okay. And just get better with it. Practice makes perfect. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, pre- presentations. I tell people this all the time. Publicly presenting, it's a muscle, a muscle that has to be it exercised. Is. Not, yes. There are very few people that are actually born as awesome presenters. It's something right. you can yeah. develop. Yeah, and then it's funny because, you know, here's a completely side thing. It's like growing up um, since sixth grade all the way to pretty much the end of college, I was a performer. Uh, I was a performer because I played, I played in the band. So I played trombone. So um, even in middle school and all the way to high school, you had competitions. You had solo competitions. You had auditions for state bands or whatever, right, ensembles and everything else. And I know what it feels like to sit in a room and be judged, specifically judged, <laughs> whether you're doing something technically or not. And I'm not saying right. that's bad. So it's just like that's the practice that that's I got. Pressure. So me, yeah, right. So me getting in front of someone, um, in front of a group of 200 people, presenting something and something goes bad, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, smaller absolutely. thing, right? right? But it's but like but you're right. It's like that's the thing that made me comfortable is that practice, right? Constantly being, you know, forcing myself out of that comfort zone and getting there. So Yeah. Now what is your role with .NET Conf? I am a uh am a executive producer of it. So I started okay. .NET Conf. Actually we started uh .NET Conf way in twenty ten, I guess ten years ago. Um and we started on a different name. We started on the M V C Conf. Hmm. So and the reason why it was called MVC Conf is because at that time we were really getting into um, ASP.NET and VC because it came right. out in 2008, 2009. Um, and we Another wanted thing to say that the goo had. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you know that he coded that on a plane? I heard that story. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he, the prototype. I read that he, first Rocks book that he and, uh, oh gosh, I think John Galloway and Hanselman and. Right, exactly. Yep. There were four people that put it together. <laughs> right, so yeah, so, um, so yeah, so we started with MVC Conf just because we love. Uh, the the things where where things were going to go could eventually land right and here we are with ASP.NET Core and .NET five and all these things so anyway we started with that and then we renamed it to be ASP Conf to encompass all of the ASP things and then um, um, Scott Hunter it was I was talking with him and it's like we need to drop the name ASP Conf we kind of call it .NET Conf because it's all about .NET it's like yeah. perfect let's do it. Awesome. So we three or four years into the conference, we changed the name and we haven't looked back. So, uh, so yeah. So that's so that's where sort of we started, like I said, ten years ago, and it's and it was all community driven. It was always a track for the product team for them to showcase again. So, uh, so uh, Guthrie, Hunter, Hanselman, you know, all whatever, the all Edwards, and all everybody who's there, right? Uh, the product team can actually go and present. And have that, but but um, we tried multiple tracks. We tried we tried every single thing in ten years, right? And the proud thing I have to say, you know, maybe this is just me, you know, having you know just kind of tapping my shoulder, is that we were literally one of the first virtual conferences. Like so, you know, twenty twenty has shifted a lot of things, right? Right. Now everything's Um, virtual. No, everything's virtual. Oh, look at this awesome! It's like okay, cool. We were doing back with live meeting (laughs) in twenty (laughs) ten. Tell about some of the challenges. Uh, oh, of actually goodness. producing a virtual conference and how you overcame them. So the hardest part, uh, you know, nowadays we take it for granted um, that streaming HD video across the web is super easy. We're doing it now, right? We're, we're right. recording it and doing these different things. Back in 2010, that was not the case um, because you needed faster internet. So right. where do you do those things, right? If you don't have fast internet, then your quality suffers. If your quality suffers and people don't want to watch it, <laughs> Because then it's painful, right? right? So that would say that was that has been the biggest hurdle we've had up to like probably two or three years ago, right? Making sure that we um, we had quality recordings that people will actually want to watch. Mm-hmm. So um, like right now, where you know before we we're setting up, we were set up Audacity so that we can kind of record the audio and do these things, right? So in case something we can sync it. Mm-hmm. Well, back in the day, we used to have people have Camtasia I and record. And record locally, right? Okay. Because if because trying to fetch video out of live meeting um, was next to impossible, and if you got it right, and then it oh, so old. it wasn't the first few years. It was not live. It was a pre-recorded. No, it was session. no, it was it was live. Okay. So we would so so the way we would set it up is that um, part of the MVP program, we were able to get money. Um, so um, 
and licenses for live meeting. So live meeting was precursor to Teams, precursor to these different things. Right. You know, it competed with WebEx, right? So imagine you you have like a WebEx, right? Where you log in and whatever mm -hmm. else. So in there, you can actually record that meeting. Mm -hmm. Later, you can download that video. Right. And crop it and do those things. So what, what we, we would do is... Now with Teams. Exactly, right. So what we would do is like, we would literally have one or two rooms, virtual rooms, where people would log in. And you were capped at a certain amount. Right. So I think live meeting was like 1,400 people or something like that per room. Was that um, Did you exceed that? Yeah, we did a couple oh, of times. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, um, and actually it was a, during a Hanselman keynote, which is always even more fun. Um, so, you know, so anyway, so what we would do is that we would record it uh, in live meeting and also have it locally in case we needed to do, you know, something was bad with the bandwidth. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's like, say, for example, you're the presenter, you're at home. Your internet, your upload speed may may not be the greatest, sure. Because typically ISPs, you know, optimize for download rather than upload. Uh, right. Yeah, absolutely. And then also, uh, you know, you live in Des Moines, but there's a lot of parts of Iowa where they don't. It's just right. rural it's, areas, right? Exactly. A lot yep. of parts of the world like that they don't have great internet access. Right. I mean, when we when we have no now, I, look back then it was like. Oh my gosh, the speakers from Australia. Do we really want to deal with uh, with a latency from Australia? And that's why for them it was more crucial to have the the local recording, right? I see. And if it's so bad, like for example, a couple of years ago we had a speaker from China, and because of China and all the the things to do with firewalls and everything else, mm -hmm. that it's like let's just record it locally, mm -hmm. because I'm not sure how much blips or hiccups we're going to run from actually live streaming. So there's been some sessions we actually do pre-record. And we show it just because of literally technical technical difficulties, right? So uh, as a whole, I think that's gotten a lot better. Uh, we went from as it, uh, we did live meeting forever until we got to the point where well, actually one time we used actually uh, Google Hangouts on air mm -hmm. uh, when when we produced it outside of Channel Nine Studios, um, and that worked that worked flawlessly because it's just and then it's on YouTube, it's easier to watch and everything else. Um, and then you know you get into the world of OBS and or even OBS Skype. OBS is. Oh, I don't remember what it stands for. Do you remember? I'll look what it up OBS right now. For? Uh, look <laughs> it up. It's like, I always keep saying OBS, like, just because we deal with the different uh, different technologies. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, don't worry. It's a, is it uh, open broadcasting software? I think it is. Uh, open broadcaster software. Yes. There you the go. OBSproject.com. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, so you can go to um, essentially what what it allows you to do is it allows you essentially. Um, do uh, use a lot of the technologies that are built now into browsers, right? Or into the streaming co and codecs. So that way it says, okay, here's my stream. Here's my op the standard of my stream. I can now push this to wherever. I can bring it together into OBS, into the OBS, OBS software on my machine, and I can bring in my mic. I can bring in a green screen or mm -hmm. whatever, right, that I may have right. and kind of bring it all together and have it be nice and, you know, nice and stitched together like so uh, a lot of the streamers that you see right now on twitch are using obs overlays and, la and layers and everything else like like i mentioned uh my good friend jeff is like if you watch his um a show um fritz and friends right on on, on twitch mm -hmm. um you can actually see him like just like he's on the lower right hand side the most of the background on background is his official studio uh, you know it's it's kind of it's it's all all encompassing right so again, we've moved leaps and bounds from it, from what it was 10 years ago. Are you, are you asking other people to uh, use tools like OBS to, pro to produce their own uh, streams? Or are you, is there somebody at uh, Command Central doing that for them? So we actually have someone, we have the wonderful folks and amazing folks at Channel 9 doing all the producing for us. So what we did this year, which was amazing, um, was that we actually used a product called StreamYard. Hmm. So StreamYard, um, StreamYard.com. So on StreamYard, you can actually, it's, uh, there's a free package, it's a paid package, and you know you can go all the way up. So with StreamYard, the thing I love about it is that it requires serial tools to be installed on your machine because it all does it via the web. Hmm. We have web browser. It uses WebRTC behind the scenes to be able to capture your video, capture your um, mic, and then stream everything together. That comes in, and then we use uh, Restreamer to broadcast to YouTube, to Channel 9, and we have multiple feeds, right? So we capture it in StreamYard, and then it goes broadcast to a bunch of other feeds. Uh, and the reason why that has been literally a godsend is because 
Um, as you know, some some developers are very finicky about kind of what kind of software they install on their machines. Right. <laughs> so if I'm telling you to install OBS, configure this, and so forth, you as a presenter, your curve to actually present just went through the roof, right? Yeah. If you, if you think about it as a physical conference, which you've been through a lot, right? What do you do? You just plug into the <laughs> to the projector. You have the lapel mic, and you're you're ready to go. So we're trying to make that virtual experience as smooth and simple as the physical one by yeah. using these sort of tools. I, I, I experienced that as a software developer. I I was on a project last year, mm -hmm. and I, they asked me to install a bunch of things on my machine. I installed, right. I created a virtual machine. Right, that's that a smart Azure, way. And I yep. did that. But virtual machines in the cloud are not ideal for audio no. and video. It's just no, they're a not. Lot it's of brutal. Latency involved there. Right, and you don't have access to the hardware. Right. Yeah. So it's funny because for the when I first started consulting, uh, I did virtual machines on the cloud because I can get a bunch of cores, whatever else. And the best part about it was that I also had Internet out of a data center, which is crazy fast. Right. Right. Because yeah, from the VM just, to the to the rest of the cloud, it's great. But from right. here to the VM, there's right. There's some hiccups there. Right. So that's why I ended up um, having uh, moving to on-prem VMs, right? So like right now I have a Mac mini, 64 gigs of RAM, 12 cores. It's a virtual machine host. Now right? I have so, processor yeah. envy. Right. So yeah, and, and it's one of those that I have to throw money at it. And like, for example, money at it because I need that local experience. Like right. Teams, trying to do Teams from a cloud VM through an RDP is brutal. Right. It, it doesn't work, right? So things like that where I have some clients that I have to install their custom VPN software or their Teams instance, and it just gets finicky. Not because of the client. It's just, just welcome to the, the, the cacophony of tools, right, mm -hmm. that we have to work with. It's easier to run it locally. But then it has access to all my hardware at that same time. So, uh, yeah, so you know, like I said, we've gone leaps and bounds with it. Uh, the most fun that we had, looking back at the time, it was not fun at all. Um, <laughs> it was during a Scott Guthrie keynote. We were using um, some third-party hosting soft, uh, a, a vendor. I'm not going to say their name <laughs> uh, because they did nothing wrong, right? It was just our, our fault for being so naive of, yeah, it's going to scale. <laughs> um, we were hosting on their on their website, uh, on their platform, the the website where we were actually put the video. So that way Scott Goo, because we had the Channel 9 uh, player, Channel 9 uh, Studios player inside our webpage. So you can just kind of go to the webpage and view it there. Yep. So we had it hosted there. And when his keynote started, we literally denial of service attack that server. <laughs> Everybody was trying to access it at the same time. Oh, we didn't test for scalability. It brought it. Brought it, didn't, didn't it brought it. The massive. It brought it down hard. Yeah. It was just nothing there. At the time, like I'm freaking out. How am I going to do this? Like trying to. Cause Were you able to solve it, was, it in a reasonable amount of time, or just uh, just punch and record it? Uh, no, we solved it. It took about 15 minutes to solve because I had to contact whatever, and they had to give me more RAM. They had to actually reboot the server and do all uh -huh. these different things. But it didn't matter for those who were already watching the stream. I see. Just uh, nobody else could get in. Nobody else could get in. Right. But when everything happens on Twitter and it's real time, it's like, what's going on? We're getting 503s, everything else. I was like, oh, my goodness, what's going on? The following year, we moved to Azure. <laughs> okay. And the reason why we couldn't be in Azure that year is because Azure didn't exist the way it existed the following year. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, that's a good promotion for the cloud in general. I right. Know, that, that exactly, yeah. That you get. Right. When you think so, you're going to get 1,000 users and you get 100,000 users. Yes. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, during the keynote, we probably average around, um, I don't know, 75,000 unique Wow. Users. Now, uh, no, sorry, not 7,500 unique views. Okay. That doesn't mean that people are actually doing on the from the website. Yeah. So it just compounds itself, right, yeah. of how it all works. And it's it's a fun, the the first half a day of the conference is the most stressful time of my life <laughs> during that year. <laughs> just because, I mean, you know, since I'm, I'm also a producer, I'm handling all the tech behind the scenes, right? right? And I've tried every single flavor of thing to do to squeeze as much performance out of those websites uh it's a fun problem and i've, I've yeah. talked and i've had presentations about it but it's just you know those are the things that okay now let's go something that can burst right mm -hmm. and the scalability so once we moved to azure it was a lot lot simpler to do those things so. i'll share the i think it was just one year that i spoke at dotnet 
and uh, I had an issue. I was in my kitchen and <laughs> just <laughs> delivering my presentation. I was on fire. I was doing great. I was giving some tactical information about something or other. Uh, it was state of the art seven or eight years ago when this was. Uh -huh. And uh, I happened to alt tab over to the chat window, and all the messages said, "No audio. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear this guy." And so somehow I got muted about halfway through my presentation, yeah. and, I went, and I, it was a it was a, a an Azure topic that was popular. I had thousands of people in there right. until this happened, and then I ended up with like a hundred people who probably right. were just left their computer. On. Yep. I well, ended see, up recording and, and, it on Camtasia and just and then submitted it. Well, it and, archive of it. See, and, and that's the way you know stuff like that will happen. Yeah. Right. Um, like. Uh, we figured out different ways to do it like great that you recorded it and that's what we tell is like if something happens with the speakers now i always tell them it's like welcome to errors will happen right. that's right not your fault you know if it is your fault don't beat yourself over it it's your fault from the perspective of you accidentally hit a button something else it's like doesn't matter welcome to being human right um but we can always get your content later right we cannot wait for you to fix it because that affects the schedule <laughs> correct yeah right so it's kind of one of those that it's. Uh, I always joke that uh, with Jeff is like we need that sort of back in the old Nickelodeon uh, days where or in the you know where they had that cane where you pull that <laughs> you kind of put the act that wasn't doing well. It's yeah. like we need like a virtual cane to kind of go and yeah. I didn't uh, need that. People just left. I got it fixed after I was I was down for I think about five or ten minutes, but it was yeah. it was too long. I lost it. And see, and I was <laughs> saying that's the and so let's talk a little about that. It's like that's the brutality. Sorry for using that word of doing online presentations, right? Yep. It's like, okay, okay I'm done. I, you know, I can easily just close the browser or go somewhere else, yep. and then it, it's a demoralizing for the presenter, right? Because like you you didn't intend to do that. So that's that's some of the stuff that I'm also hoping that we can fix or or educate people on. It's like if something like this happens, right? We need to do something a little bit better as a community to help somebody else. Because how would you like it if some if you were Let's let's switch roles, right? If you're presenting, mm -hmm. and something like that were to happen to you, right? So let's let's be kind to one another, sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the big things that you're doing here is you're giving people opportunities to succeed, and you're giving them the support that they need to be successful as public presenters, right? And, 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 and yeah. do something for the community at large, just to spread this knowledge. And this right. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, and we take anybody. I mean, we take people who have never presented before. Um, we will work with you on it just to make sure that you don't feel overly nervous right mm -hmm. and you do well on it uh, i do tech checks with everybody mm -hmm. you know so like this year this year um i got um we learn something new every year right uh and that's a nice thing about iterating so fast in a year right um this year i learned the lesson to let's two weeks two two and a half weeks before the conference let's do two days where we just do back-to-back -back tech checks mm -hmm. Because before I was most like okay, well the weekend before, and I'm trying to schedule you know schedule things and move my calendar around, and it just became a nightmare. Like 2019 was a nightmare when I was trying to do that, right. and it's all my fault. It was no one's fault, right? So this year I was like, you know what? Two and a half weeks before the conference, I'm going to carve out two days this week and a day the following week for the stragglers, stragglers because people have different schedules and whatnot, right? So. This year, it was like, okay, we're going to do a Wednesday and Thursday, I think it was. And from, I think, 7 a.m. Central Time to like 6 p.m. Central Time, I'm going to book it. 15 minutes. So mm -hmm. you would come in. It was like, okay, let's go over your audio. Let's go this. Let's go, your, let's go to your slides. How do you feel? You feel comfortable? Great. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker. Next speaker. Next speaker. I did 65 tech checks. Oh, wow. <laughs> in those, it, must have been in those it was exhausting. By, by day two, I was... I was pretty tired, but I got to meet all the speakers. Nice. I got to feel, make them feel comfortable about it and those sort of things. So it's, you know, it's kind of nice that from that way. So if you hear that, that's my dog. He's just, over there. <laughs> <laughs> he's, <camera. itching. laughs> he, hey, he's down there. Okay. Remember Buster? <laughs> no, he's like looking at me like, what? <laughs> hey, are you, uh, so are you doing uh, some virtual presentations yourself? I am. So uh, I have one, not not this year. Um, so early next year, I'm doing some. I'm trying to spin up a, a, a stream, a show like you have uh, for 2021. Really I just been like so. I, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. 
I, I, I already have the website. I already have the technical things figured out. I don't have the schedule figured out yet just because I've been busy with client work, you know, and so forth. Yeah. I do have the last two weeks of the year off. Me too. Um, yeah, so, um, so I'm just I'm going to... I'm on vacation to, right now. Lucky, I will be on vacation at 5 p.m. <laughs> Central today. It feels great. I just tell you <laughs> it feels it amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, but the vacation is essentially is doing my business taxes, doing all the different what things. So it's not working, but it is working. Right. right. Uh, but so that's my goal is to kind of kickstart these things. Um, so that way uh, I can get a little bit ahead on the conference pieces. Right. So last year, also one thing I forgot to mention is we did um, three uh, focus focus on events for my dotnet conf so last january uh sorry this january we did um focus on blazer right and then like in march i think it was yeah march we did focus on xamarin and then in july ish we did a focus on microservices oh wow so this isn't just an then, annual thing and this so is... and then we did yeah so like let's let's kick the tires so we did mm -hmm. four sessions but it was only one day right so it was super easy to manage it was still tight uh, tight as in like content wise, right? Mm. It had a specific arc for content, um, but it was just like, here's other things, right? And then when we get to the the final, the fourth one is the big one with the three days, right? right. Um, so I, th we discussed the idea of doing that again for 2021. I'm not sure where we, where we ended up, ended up on that one. So, but again, focusing more of like, here's one thing rather than like when you go to the big session, it's like, oh, there's two sessions about the thing you want to learn. Right. Right, like for example, Blazor. There might be one or two sessions on Blazor, rather than like here's an entire day on Blazor. Mm. You know, yes. that that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's hopefully what I want to get ahead of and be a little more proactive for next year. So, excellent, Javier. It's yep. been a pleasure talking to you. It's been too yeah. long. Yes, I know. My apologies, sir. So, and it's funny because uh, you're in Chicago. Uh, yeah. My brother is in Chicago. Uh, lives there. My dad's staying with him. So, obviously. 2020 has been difficult to be there. So uh, next time in town, I'll, I'm sure to hit you up. We'll enjoy a beverage together. <laughs> yes, we shall. <laughs> <laughs> you stay safe, my friend. Thank you. In these troubling times, things go smoother with technology and friends.